And please consider voting for me, Abraham, the bear clown, to be your next Mr. Bear Europe 2024. Hey there, this is Bears in Excess. I'm Eric. I'm Christian. This is the Bears in Excess show. We're doing this small series about the, some contestants of Mr. Bear Europe 2024. We talked to some of them. Yes. We hope we can do all of them, but, you know, time zones is a last minute thing. I have other things going on, so hope we can do everybody. Yeah. But I'm not sure. But this episode is about Abraham. Him. This is Mr. Bear. Israel 2022-2023. And almost 2024, but there'll be another contest for 2024. Yes. So we're going to talk to him about, of course, the titles, about Mr. Bear Europe, why he decided to do. He's also a clown. So I'm going to talk to him about that in the election. So we can see him for the, right for the election. You can vote online. Mr. Bear. Europe.com. Everything about Israel can be polemic, especially nowadays. Mm -hmm. So I want to make clear that this is about the contest, Mr. Bear, about him, his career. So we didn't really Not talk political, poli political, or what's going on. Of course, it's so complex, and we don't want to bring much that to here. Yes. Hello, Abraham. Hello. Hi, Christian and Eric. And the world. <laughs> nice to meet you. Thanks yeah. for doing this. It'd be nice to, Great talk. to meet you as well. Thanks for having me. Tell us about yourself. For example, where are you from, your age, your occupation? My name's Abraham. Uh, my English is super awesome for an Israeli because I'm originally from Seattle, Washington, US of A. <laughs> Uh, and I came to Israel kind of on accident, uh, when I was 22, I came to do sort of like a, a post-college study abroad. And then I really enjoyed my time. Uh, so I stayed and did another thing and then I stayed and did another thing. And then next thing went to the next thing. And now I've been here for whew, 12 and a half years. Um, so that's where I'm from. Now I live in uh, a city halfway between Tel Aviv and, and Haifa called Hadera. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, I'm a teacher and a theater maker and a clown. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's what I do. And I'll make a lot of money. Cool. What age group do you teach? I have... So this year I'm actually not teaching. Uh, I've been finishing my MFA. So... This year I took a break so I could focus on my schoolwork. Uh, but I have mostly been teaching recently the K through sixth grade set. Uh, but I have experience with all ages and I love teaching all ages for completely different reasons. Uh, I like elementary school kids because they can still have imagination. I like middle school kids because when you succeed to teach with them, it's awesome. Uh, and I like high school kids because you can have an actual conversation. Uh, oh, and I teach theater. That's my subject. Um, you're, as you mentioned, you're also a clown. How did you get started in this profession? So, to be honest, my first clown performance is what I think helped me win the sash. Uh, it was at the talent show portion of the Mr. Bear Israel contest in November 2022. Uh, I've always been sort of like a performer uh, in, in that sense of like there's performers and there's actors. Uh, and I've always been like a silly, goofy guy who likes to do silly, goofy things. And right, my, my animal work is on point, as we say. I can do all sorts of crazy animal things. And I've been flirting with the idea of doing some clown work. And basically, I said, this is my chance. So I did a clown burlesque number. It was very successful. Uh, and then I started being like, what's the next thing I can do with the clowning? Uh, and surprise, surprise, um, we started doing social protests pretty quickly afterwards uh, against all sorts of government things here in Israel. Uh, and my partner, Or, and I decided to clown it out at the social protests. And that's been our main clown performance. We do it every week uh, all over Israel at different, uh, um, different protests. 
You see him? In this that, that's him. The beautiful one with the beautiful tears is my partner Or, or in clown, Silvash. And the grumpy one with the scary mask is me, uh, or in clown, Gumbot. <laughs> the Hungarians. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Silvash Gumbot is a delicious treat filled with plums. So. Very true. When you tell people that you're a clown, what are their reactions? Um, I think mostly fear or like, ooh, that's so weird. Um, <laughs> and then it very quickly goes into why, um, why protests, why clown, like is that, that's not even effective, is it? Um, and then people, after like um, showing them a couple of images or a video, people are like, oh, that's so cool. Awesome. And that's kind of where it starts and stops. Oh, okay. Oh, you mentioned the Hungarian. Just explain why we said Hungarian so people. So understand. I'm, I'm also Hungarian. So the, I noticed on your um, Instagram that you use those names. So I wanted to know what the connection was. So, so I like to use food names particularly of sort of like ethnic, can I say that? Ethnic food, uh, like non-stereotypical Western European white food. Um, I like to use those sorts of names for clowns and other like interesting characters. Um, and when we started giving these clowns form and body, I just, it came to us that like the right name was Silvas Gombot, uh, which like I said, is a delicious Hungarian, like, uh, pastry made out of like potato flour dough and filled with like a plum. Uh, so that's what we went for. So we're Silvas and Gombok and our third clan was Krumpli. We are looking for a new Krumpli. If you think you could be the new Krumpli, you are welcome to reach out. Um, but yeah, I just love to, I love to use these names of these things. There I am. That's me getting ready for the, for the talent show. Um, it was a whole clown striptease. Uh, I can try and put the video as a reel, maybe on Mr. Barry Israel um, later. Um, yeah, I just I just love to, to, the sounds are interesting to me of, of of sort of non English food names, and then I like to have the dramaturgical like depth of like this extra meaning. Uh, I'm currently working on a, a show for Gombots that uh, in Hebrew would be called Gombots Met Liz Dayen. Uh, and in English, you could roughly say Gombots wants a dicking. And it's about how Gombots desperately wants to be a bottom and be fucked. Uh, but he has this giant balloon penis. And so everyone wants him to be a top. And it's <laughs> the trauma and dread of, of having a large penis but wanting to be a bottom. <laughs> With clown. What, what dilemma? <laughs> okay, and what are people's reactions when you mention that you're Mr. Bear Israel. Um, I mean, because the first where, time you see a, a Mr. Bear who's also a clown or a clown who's also a Mr. Bear is a kind of, you yes. don't think about it. No. Yes. It, so I would say that the first thing that I often get um, is what does that mean? What is Mr. Bear? Uh, I spend a lot of time explaining to basically everyone I meet what a bear is, what bears are, what the bear community is, uh, how I fit in. Um, because also there's a lot of people who do know what a bear is and they're like, but you're so small and you're not hairy at all. And I say, I'm a little hairy. I'm not that small. Um, but most of the time it's very much like, what is that? Is that real? Uh, and then once I've explained and they figured it out, they're like, oh, that's very cool. Uh, and what do you do with that? And I say, whatever I think is right for my community. The protesting is something I do for myself more than I do as Mr. Bear. I try to like keep them a little apart, but they are known. They're known together, which is why, as you see in the back, I have my little bear clown logo. And just to let you know, you could say you're a pocket bear. Ah, oh, you're right. I could say I'm a pocket bear. Like I said, I, uh, I actually, um, thanks to having been active on Tumblr from 2007 to 2012, 
uh, I call myself a trash panda, and a panda is a type of bear, and a trash panda is a raccoon. Uh, and it's a joke that works really well in Hebrew because the word for bear in Hebrew is dov. Uh, the word for cub in Hebrew is dubon. And the word for raccoon in Hebrew is dvivon, which almost feels like, uh, like a double miniature. So I call myself a dvivon, like an itty bitty bear <laughs> doing chaos. When you went to move to Israel, we knew Hebrew then. Um, uh. I would say that when I moved to Israel, I knew Hebrew the way that a Spanish major moves to Spain and then discovers they actually don't know Spanish at all. Uh, I had this very, I had this very highfalutin literary Hebrew that I couldn't use. Um, my functional speaking Hebrew at that time was like, I felt like I was a fourth grader <laughs> at best. Uh, and sometimes I for sure had these sentences that were sort of like, me tai tai, wawa please. Like I just was yeah. not, and it was so, it was so much work to try and put a sentence together at first. Um, but I had this like really strong base of grammar and vocabulary. And so just by lucking out and having people who like invested time and energy to like force me to speak Hebrew um, and hang out with me, I got much better. I was also ultimately drafted into the uh, IDF, and that really, you know, that really puts a shine on, on the language, because when you have everyone and no one speaks English, <laughs> you, uh, it's sink or swim. <laughs> Very true. Very immersive. I might say this wrong, but coolerophilia is What the... about this question first, Eric? I forgot the question. Okay, oh. what is clowns against? Okay. Clowns Against is, um, so I kind of already, I, I kind of jumped the lead. I, I hopped your shear, as we used to say when I was at uh, Yeshiva. Um, Clowns Against is, is my little action group that's me and my partner, Or, and our friend Maya, who was crumply. And like I said, we're looking for a new crumply. Um, and it's, it's our focus on, oh, there I go. <laughs> Look at me, I look so happy. Um, that was a pride. So that's why it looked much more fun than normally. Normally we're sweating and we're angry and we're frustrated and we're, we don't smile because we're upset. Um, it, like I said, it started basically um, in, it started in March of 2023. We started showing up in clown face um, because we sort of were like, there's something missing that we could provide if we're theater people. And very quickly, what we realized that was missing in our area that we started providing was, was at least for the original protests, which were social, which was a social protest against government, against like sort of government overreach about, um, about overhauling the judicial system. Um, it's a long, slow burn to do that sort of protest, right? We were showing up week after week after week and like, you don't know that anything's happening. You just know that nothing, you don't know you're doing anything effective beyond just like stopping, right? You're holding a line and that's really hard because when you don't have like a concrete victory, it's kind of easy to be like, well, what's the point? Why am I doing this week after week? And sort of like a lot of work went into like telling people about how important it was, but not being like, and you guys are awesome and what you're doing is great. And so what we realized is that when we showed up as clowns and the first time we did it, we just did it, it was Purim, right? We had Jewish, we had Jewish Halloween to give us cover. So we could be like, maybe, haha, it won't work. Uh, and people were just so ecstatic and thrilled because suddenly it was like this fun thing had entered their arena with them. And we realized that that's sort of like what we were able to do is by like moving around within the protest spaces, we were able to, to like draw attention to people. We could like bring smiles. We did silly stuff. Um, and basically we consider ourselves there to like focus on providing care and feeding of like the spiritual and emotional well-being of the protesters with us. Like we don't, we don't think we're that important in the perspective of like, we don't think we're ourselves making a change happen. We think we're there to like make it easier for people to keep coming back every week. Um, and we particularly do it in our region away from Tel Aviv uh, historically, because we felt it's important to like encourage and maintain uh, our comrades here. Um, so that's what clowns against. We're clowns against fascism. We're clowns against um, all bad things, right? <laughs> like we, wherever, um, when we're at Pride, if you show the picture, we got interviewed by 
one of the one of the satirical interviewee guys. I don't know if it ever went on went live on his thing. Uh, and he said, "Oh, so you just will show up wherever there's a protest." And we said, "If it's a good one, yeah." Um, like that's our thing right we we want people to feel like what they're doing means something and like people people see us and they smile people see us and they they feel like a positive feeling and also some people who recognize how much work goes into putting on those damn faces every week appreciate the investment because we do it for them right it's not i don't put that face on so i can be in the news i don't put that face on so that somebody takes a picture and puts it on instagram it's cool i love it when it happens, especially when they gag me, but like, I do it because I want to make sure that everyone who's coming to the same protest I'm at, like, I I want to try to have a moment with them. Um, so that's what comes against the bat. Okay, interesting. Um, I hope that answered the question. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Okay, coolerophilia is the fetish related to sexual feelings towards clowns, mimes, and gestures. Sorry, gestures. Have people looked for you because of that, do you think? I don't think so. Um, maybe. I know. Yeah, like, so oh, the thing that's is, why. <laughs> suddenly everything makes, right? We should put that, uh, uh, the meme, right, of from Proof. It's not Proof, it's Prime, whatever. You know, the, the woman thinking out math. Um, I don't think like there are some people. Listen, when we take off the makeup, because we're still wearing the makeup after a protest, sometimes we'll like we'll take naughty selfies and like put them on our close friends um, because it's sort of like fun to blur that line and be like, this is a, the same way that I feel about being a bear. Where like sometimes what I'm doing is just like feeling myself in public and like I'm not I'm not supposed to be allowed to feel myself. Right? I'm supposed to like be ashamed of my body and like shrink myself down and not take up space. So when I take up space and when I like wear my crop top. And when I do, you know, so I feel like also as a clown, like when I push that envelope and I'm like, right, because Gombos is a sexy clown. Gombos wants to be sexy. Um, and I know that gets some positive feedback. We've had some people joking that we should make an OnlyFans um, for the clowns. But I don't, I don't, I don't I think don't people want... really look into it. But oh, yeah. you found it, guys. <laughs> oh, yeah. Count. My first subscribers. Yeah. Ka-ching. Um, but I think it's less because of the clown and more because like Orin and I just have very good physical chemistry as well as like actual chemistry. Um, and so we take pictures together well and we take pictures together separately well and I think people like read into it a little bit more. But I don't think it's I don't think it's particularly the clown. I think it's like us. And then the clown is an extra bonus of like it's interesting and it's weird and it's a little different. It's interesting. I have the like kind of different roles. I have the clown, I have the bear, and I have different personas yeah. kind of thing yeah yeah you got me <laughs> <laughs> what does bear, uh, body positivity mean to you oh my gosh um that's a good one isn't it <laughs> I, well, I was gonna say because my immediate association and i might ask you to not include this my immediate association is buzzword um because I'm sort of like, listen, it's the same thing that like I, uh, a couple a couple years ago, I sort of realized that like I prefer to, I, uh, if I could go back in time and like sort of decide if I, if I could be a kid now, I would probably be like, I want to be non-binary and stop calling me he, but I was socialized as a he for so long that it's like weird. And also Hebrew is a fully gendered language, so I can't be like, call me they. Um, but I started like considering myself he they because I don't really like to be perceived. If that makes sense, I don't want to be perceived in, as my body. Like my body is great and I love my body for the most part, but like I am more than just my body, and I feel like gendered pronouns for me sort of like essentializes me. And in some ways, I find that body positivity positivity has become a very body essentializing thing. Um, and I sort of like myself rock out a little more with body neutrality or sort of like bodies are bodies sometimes they're awesome sometimes they're terrible i think it's also because like um i have uh i have some chronic physical issues which make it really hard for me up oh, there see i do love my body don't get me wrong i think my body is great 
and silly. And I like to, you know, they're very clowny, right? Suspenders and a thong. Um, like I like to show off my body. I like that. I like my body, but I also like sometimes hate my body because, right? Like I have, um, IBS, I have chronic pain syndrome. I have two, uh, I have two herniated discs, right? Like, um, I'm just slowly waiting for, you know, I have sciatica that comes and goes. I'm with, like, I, you know, I'm 35 and my body thinks that it's 85, uh, as it were. So like body positivity is sometimes going to be hard for me to, to hang out with. Cause I can't, I can't be wandering around being like, my body is awesome and perfect. Cause it's not objectively, it is not awesome and perfect. But I also don't like f- try, I try not to focus on like how much I hate myself or my body. And it's actually be like, my body exists. It's the body I have. I try to take care of it as much as I can. I don't, it's part of me, right? I'm part of it. We're in this together. Let's carry on, right? Like what we do, me and the body, what we do is much more important than like anything here. So that's how I feel about body positivity. I know it's not like a, it's not a fun, sexy answer. It's not like, woohoo, all bodies are special. Um, but it's because it's, it's rooted in my experience of my body. Um, I will say that like, like I said earlier, right? I do think something that maybe is body positivity that I really do jam with is, right? Like forcing people, as much as I don't want to be perceived as my body, I don't like what's happening. So forcing people to perceive my body in a way that I want, right? In a way that like, for instance, like I said, wearing crop tops and forcing people to experience that. Um, right? Because society doesn't like to see at all the male body exposed that way. And certainly not an unruly male body right? Not a curvy, swervy male body with a, you know, the furry tummy. Um, so it's complicated, I guess, as we used to say on Facebook once upon a time. Mm-hmm. But like, I would prefer people to love the skin they're in, whether it be because they're, yes, my body is awesome no matter what, it can always be perfect, or because they're like, this is the body I have and I'm going to make it, I'm going to make it work because like, I don't get another one. I think those are the options. I think anything else is not a it's not a healthy path or a safe path that's interesting and because it says all over everything now we're mr bear israel is very cool because people some are perceived this kind of mr bear and like that should be the perfect body the perfect everything and realize what you've been learning all these interviews for example that all of them were normal people they have pains yeah. they have issues so it's not like yeah. oh, Mr. Bear means, oh, you're perfect. No, it's fine. No, it's the opposite. It means that you're super normal, but everyone projects onto you that you're perfect, and then it's upset that you're not perfect sometimes. That doesn't let me have to go in. Um, <laughs> that maybe sounds bitter. Um, no, I, I agree. Yeah, like, I think it's very, I think it's, well, I'm sorry that the, the I'm all, I, I'm also, Considering going and doing a, a a research MA after I finish my MFA, so I'm very like deep in the weeds there. But, like yeah, like this this like cloud, this like lens that people look at, like the Mr. Bear goggles, <laughs> the way that the world perceives the the few of us who are Mr. Bear, right, and like reads onto us this sort of like, ooh, you're the ultimate emblem of like, and we're like, I what? <laughs> I'm the ultimate emblem. <laughs> I'm who you chose for like now. Like I don't know. I, I, oh. yeah, heavy is the head that wears the sash. It was an interesting thing, like how people imagine what could be, and then it's not really that. That's why I want to do this series too to show the. It's not just a pretty who pet. they are, what they're about. It's not just glamour. So why did you run for Mr. Bear Israel? Oh yeah, there I am. So that's 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 actually my recent that's my Purim party I threw uh, this year. Um, I read so there on the left is is uh, Noam Noam Roth, Mama Bear, uh, who's in charge of the Israel Bear contest and um, the organization. Um, so I mostly function in a world of like intuition and like what feels right at the moment. Uh, I'm not a very good like long distance planner. Uh, I, I'm not a very like Right, like I told you, I, I, I'm here in Israel now for 12 and a half years, kind of, because I'm like, well, I'm, I'm still enjoying myself. Um, so I, I don't know that I had like a particularly deep thought out reason, um, especially because I was initially meant to, to participate in 
the 2021 event. Um, but my friends had the good fortune and poor timing to get married over the same weekend. Uh, so I was unable to participate. And so uh, Noam, who, who might remember better than I do why I originally was like, yes, let's do this. Basically was like, so you're doing it next year. And I said, oh, okay, <laughs> let's do that. Um, I think I did it. It's a very, it's the same reason like how I showed up in Israel. It's kind of like, okay, this could be fun. I did it and I was sort of like, this would be like a, a fun, cool way to get sort of like more involved. I had no imagination that I would win, right? Um, not in like any sort of like, ooh, hee hee, say nice things about me. Just like literally did not, I was like, I'm not super involved in the community. I'm not super this, I'm not super that. Uh, I'm kind of a weirdo, right? I'm kind of a weirdo, like who knows? I had no thoughts, no thoughts I would win. Um, so I just went in there to like kind of have fun and like make friends and like kind of break the ice a little bit more between me and the community. And then surprise, surprise, <laughs> Now I am he. Uh, I am Mr. Fair Israel. Um, but yeah, the problem is like when you function the way that I do in a sort of like what feels right in the moment kind of way, it makes for bad storytelling afterwards. So I apologize. I don't have a, I don't have a great reason. Uh, I just kind of thought it would be cool. And Noam like kind of was like, you should do what I think you that bought. And I was like, okay, that's my language. It's interesting because you had the fifth Mr. Bear Israel. Out of the five, we know three of them. Yeah. The one before you, I forgot his name. He, 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 he was a uh, awesome. guest host. We had a feature on our Bear Success on Instagram. He was the host. So he made videos oh. about the wet, I think it was wet week. Yeah. And before we have the uh, Noam. No, no or, 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 or. He was also. I think it was a, a wet again. Can you make the bears wet? He did well. He made an amazing video in the shower and getting ready to the shower. It was really cool. Oh, yeah, I yeah. I interview him for a bears in set show a while ago. It was really cool Yeah. to do that. So yeah, he makes, he makes very spicy content. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's interesting how the five is now three. So I'm good. <laughs> so uh, tell us about why you're running for Mr. Bear Europe. Okay. Um, why am I running for Mr. Bear Europe? See, again, because it, it felt right. No, no. Here I actually have a better, I have a good answer for once. Um, it's going to relate to the answer to, the, to a coming question. I know the question's in advance. Um, it's going to relate to a, a coming question about why am I still Mr. Bear Israel? Uh, why am I 2022 plus? Um, when the call came, there's a, it's a two-parter. When the call came, first of all, last year I had been invited uh, to participate in World Bear, Mr. World Bear, um, but it, couldn't, it didn't work out for several reasons. Uh, so when the call came this year, I, I asked if I could. Uh, I asked basically all the other ministers and, and vice ministers of Israel if they were if they would mind, and they were like, no, go for it. Because um, I wanted to like sort of have an experience on the world stage. Uh, but more importantly, I went for it because in light of um, the events of the 7th of October and the war or, sorry, I don't, it's hard for me to talk about at all. Uh, not in like, ooh, what was me? But in like, a, it's a difficult topic. Um, in light of the events happening on the 7th of October and everything that's happened since, um and the way that at least we in israel and jewish people in israel and abroad perceive the world reacting to israel and to jews um it was really important to me to participate and to sort of like show my community that we're still part of a global community that is willing and ready and open to accept us and love us and to maintain that connection and not play into a really strong narrative here and abroad that basically like we're all by ourselves and nobody loves us, right? That we have to be even more of an island and we can't have friends and no one will like us. And because and, I think that's a self-fulfilling prophecy. And I think the most important thing to do as an individual, right? As a private individual, as a, as a, as a homosexual, as a Jew, as a leftist, 
as a clown, as Mr. Bear, like the most important thing I can do is to continue to try and maintain open lines of conversation with as many people as possible. Um, and also like, right, the same way that I want to force my body into spaces where it's not supposed to be because it's like unruly or different. Like I kind of want to force my person into a, like, right. Cause the person that I am, I think sort of isn't the person that a lot of people globally have decided is like who Israelis are besides the part that I'm an immigrant and they're like, Oh, go back to America. Um, right. And I'm like, okay, great. Tell that to my partner who I can't bring to America. It's like awesome. Yes. <laughs> right. Like, let's talk about American immigration law. Um, like, let's talk about anything that's like actually practical and pragmatic. Um, but that's the thing, right? So I, I, it was for me, it is less important to me to win. It would be awesome to win. Cause like, that would be cool. Like, cause it would be cool. Right. Um, and, but it's less important for me to win than it is important for me to like, to be there and to be there with self-respect and dignity and to be there with these wonderful men who I've gotten to know over the course of these past couple of months. Um, and show that like, as a community, as, a, as an international community of bears and, and men, that we are able to look one another in the eye and say, like, even if maybe we don't always agree about everything, like, we see each other as humans and we respect each other as people, right? Like, I'm very good friends with these guys. Um, a lot of them have been, it's been Pride Month, right? And there's been all sorts of, like, you know, there's Madrid Critical Pride, which is like, you know, a very left wing and, and Western left wing event. And some of my friends went there and I, but I know that they also like love and care for me. Right. And they're concerned for me and my well being and Or's well being. And that like, they can handle that sort of quote unquote cognitive dissonance. They can do those things. And I can do that too. And that's the work. Like that's the work of humanity. And I think that's the work that bears in particular are, are so well equipped to handle. Right. We're a community based on, on like openness, honesty, intimacy, right. Companionship, friendship, as well as like love and sex and body, but like we're so much about like, right. Like seeing each other as the people we actually are. And I just wish that everyone could do that. And that's why I'm, so I guess I'm here mostly to like make the conversation a little bit more difficult for everyone else. <laughs> Cause my conversation is really hard. Yeah. But I was wondering, uh, first question was, I forgot about it is why Israel in Europe? It's like Eurovision because I learned that Eurovision and Bear, Mr. Bear Europe are very similar. How yeah. the whole country and then they have the the online jury and there's a uh, the person jury. There's it's very. I wonder if it's the same idea. Oh, Israel in, in Eurovision, so can do Israel, Mr. Bear Europe. I think so. Like every once in a while, some wag will be like, "You should just do Mr. Bear Middle Middle East and like make friends with." And I was like, "Oh yeah, okay, awesome." When we solve local regional peace, then we'll do that. Yes, but like until then, okay. Uh, so I think it's more that much like Eurovision, um, right? Ostensibly, at a certain point in time, Eurovision extended the the branch to the entire Middle Eastern region, and basically, right? Like this is deep history, so we won't go into like why and how and whatnot and who's the real reason. But you know, as per usual, if Israel is somewhere. Uh, uh, most everyone else in the region is not, right? And vice versa. Um, so that's why Eurovision, to my understanding, that's why Israel's part of Eurovision. And I believe that Israel is, is attached to the European bear community, mostly because like, we're already going there. You're, you know, first of all, Israeli homosexuals and bear, like bears and non-bears alike are, are all over Europe all the time. And Right, like you can say what you want, but a lot of it, a lot, a lot, a lot of European homosexuals, um, bears and otherwise, are coming to Israel all the time. Like we're clearly, we're clearly intertwined um, at some level, and so it makes sense um, at the moment. Who knows? It's possible that it may not make sense anymore. It's possible that like it may not make sense after this year. It's possible that it already didn't make sense. I don't know. But since at the moment it does make sense, according to everyone who's in charge. So I'm I'm doing it. I like as as Hello? Mr. Nat, as Mr. Nat, my band teacher in middle school used to say, take the money and run. Whenever somebody gives you something good, you just go for it. You don't stop and ask questions to make them think that they shouldn't give it to you. 
I got an opportunity. I have a platform. I'm not, I'm not asking questions right now. It's not my job. True. Yeah. And uh, I read for the criticism or whatever might happen when you go there because it's in two weeks. Uh, because comparing the Israel and the revision this year was a problem. Yeah. The way people react, the way it happened was so insane. But are you prepared for this kind of reaction? Possible negativity? Um, I, supp like, I suppose the diplomatic answer would be, yes, I clearly have. No, I have, I'm not prepared because I'm a person. Okay. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a just a regular guy, right? Like, I don't have, like, for good and for bad, I don't have, like, a whole huge government apparatus or, like, quasi-government apparatus, you know, setting me up and taking, uh, I'm just a guy. I have no idea. I have no idea what can happen. But uh, Martin, Mr. Bear Poland, who is the tallest of us all, has promised to keep me safe. Um, and in case anything goes crazy and wild. Uh, and I, basically, like, I, I plan on being with the squad kind of at all times. <laughs> I, kind of, I kind of plan on having a buddy, no matter what. Um, because the thing for me that's more frustrating is that I... Um, I can lose my cool very quickly, um, which is not a good look. <laughs> and so I really don't want to suddenly just like lose my cool and start going crazy because it'll make me look bad. It'll make my friends look bad. It'll make my country look bad. Uh, because ultimately, as much as I am a private citizen doing a private citizen thing, I will be viewed as not. And so I have to carry this double weight. So I plan on having a buddy with me at all times uh, and hoping for the best. By the way, you should thank Martin. Yes. Because we talked to him days ago. Here, Mr. Bear. He's the one who connected us to the other contestants because some of the contestants, yeah. we knew five of them. Three, you, uh, two more we didn't know. So he yeah. helped us connect each other. So he was so. Yeah, he's a, he's a real sweetheart, guys. Yes. Yes, yes. If you don't know who to vote for and you don't like me, Literally, everyone's a good choice, but Martin's a great choice also, right? So, if he, look. Ooh, oh, that's look good. at me. Yeah, we do. Um, uh... Ooh, I love that. I'm actually 2022, 2023. Oh. We do it okay. old-fashioned style. Well, at the end of this year, we'll have a new election, and then that will be 2024. Oh, okay. Sorry. We do it in November, so, like. Why has your reign been two years? So my reign uh, extended because um, this little thing that I already re recalled, they were counted the 7th of October, um, which, uh, yeah, right. Yeah. It's, I think it speaks for itself. Um, the, the sad irony, like the, the tiny private sad irony for the Mr. Bear contest of 2023 that never happened was that on the 6th of, of October, they, all, the all the competitors got together to do their photo shoot, to do the, the pre, uh, to the photo shoot, to do the, the photos to announce the candidates and the contestants and, and everything. Um, I was not in Israel. I, I, we were on a, a family vacation celebrating Or's father's 70th birthday um, in Turkey, which was a horrific experience. Uh, um, and so everyone was very excited on the 6th. Um, they for the photos, us, because we did the, the birthday party. And then we all woke up the next morning to terror, fright, fear, right? Um, and again, it's un like we've talked about it with friends, talked with a lot of friends, and it's unclear to any of us. Like, we, nobody has decided yet if it was more frightening and terrifying to be in Israel. And keeping track of, of the unknowing horror would be abroad and be keeping track, but also be like, and I have no way of knowing where anyone is because no one can answer. Um, it's a really scary day. And, and the original, the 2023 contest was supposed to be November 5th. Uh, and of course we basically were like, no, that's not, that's, that's not a thing we can do right now. Um, and basically as, as I think everyone knows in the in the grown up world where things happen, um, it's not easy to suddenly re reset. Um, especially because one of the things that 
that I think is most important and we think is very important about doing these competitions is having the guest judges from abroad, right, maintaining that flow of international communication and, and community. Um, in the first couple of months, right, there were no flights into and out of Israel besides like Elal, and in particular, very few ones. Um, so we can do that. And then also, right, Noam and Or got married uh, in February, which meant that they were not available to produce a festival at any time until they got married. After they got married, they went on a quick honeymoon. Um, and then, right, if they, had, if they had started the moment they got back from their honeymoon, if they started working on producing it, we would have produced it in the middle of Pride, which is a, a, big, it's a big lift, right? And then basically, we're, once we said, okay, Pride's a big lift, then we were like, okay, what happens? Next, and then at that point, we'd already known behind scenes that I was doing Mr. Bear Europe. We're like, it's going to be a little weird to do them both at the same time. Uh, August, almost nobody's in the country. August is the time that basically everyone goes on vacation. Although, who knows if anyone's going on vacation this year in August. Um, and then at that point, it makes the most sense to just... It basically was like a, a comedy of like calendar issues, right? Uh, once we sort of had recovered from... But in that first three to five months, it was just like, this is not an option. This is not a thing that anybody is comfortable, willing, or capable of doing. Have you received any negativity as Mr. Bear Israel? Uh, yes. I had that answer with a quickness. Yes, I have received negativity as Mr. Bear Israel um, from basically every direction. Um, I have received negativity from abroad. Right. I uh, just recently, I actually, it's very, I just got um, like a, a Facebook message the other day that basically said, that said, um, die Nazi scum, no punctuation. So R and I looked at it and we're like, this could parse in a lot of ways. Unclear what he means. We will not ask for clarification. Um, right. I get a lot. I get a lot of negative feedback. Uh, I get a lot of negative feedback here at home because I'm pretty stridently leftist and vocal like I have been just now with you about my views on the need for peace and, uh, and a hostage deal yesterday. Um, so yeah, like I get, I get negative feedback a lot. Um, sometimes I clap back when I have the energy, but when I don't, I just ignore it because I don't, I have too much going on, right? Mm -hmm. I have my clown. I have my work. I have great, I make theater, so I've I've played. I tr I'm translating, directing, and like mounting production sort of all the time. Like I, I just don't have time to be giving energy to negative to negativity. True, very true. Very true. So your bio talks about your goals to encourage more openness, dialogue, and encounters within the bear community. How do you plan to do this? So. I think a good example, uh, like a good local example for me uh, that luckily I had pictures from, so I sent them to you. Um, I did the, um, the we called it the, the Mishte Shel Mardov, the, the like, uh, the Purim party of Mardov, uh, Mr. Bear, sorry. Um, and I, I really insisted on that. It was really important for me to do because like, I think that there's something about like, the Israeli bear community exists a lot in virtual reality. We exist a lot in Facebook and WhatsApp. And, and then we have meetings. Like we come together for stuff. Like now that it's summer again, so we come together a lot more. We have our weekly swim. Um, I won't tell you more than that because it's supposed to be a secret. Um, but like we have, we have a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of our stuff happens online. And it's really important for me to like bring us into community, into physical space together. And it was important for me to do it. I, I'm not only a member of the bear community, I'm a member of the Israeli leather and fetish community, uh, uh, which is now called, uh, sorry. Oh my gosh, this is really embarrassing. Uh, can I look up the name really fast? Please? You can put some. Um, oh I know, right? Just a little elevator music. I do elevator music. Okay. Israel men's fetish club is the name. IMFC. So like, when I threw this for a party, it was to me a natural fit that the people I most wanted to have come as well as like honored guests or like co-hosts was the fetish community, right? Because which is that's low hanging fruit, right? We're like we're close relatives, but like there were people there who had like never actually encountered each other, 
even though like like there's a lot of like people who are cross pollinating those two vines but like there's a lot of people who like don't even know the two the other vine exists so there was like some really fun interaction there and basically what i bring to say is that like i view physical interaction as like or when it's not possible like face to face like what we're doing now interaction is like the most important thing that i could do so i would want um a little talking like out of nowhere because you know <laughs> i i don't know what is actually possible for me to do and i have no idea what what could change you know the whole world could change tomorrow and i could never be able to leave this country again um so in a fantastically ideal world as mr bear europe i would try and do things i would try and be present in a lot of events around europe but I'd also try and create like particularly important um moments in time in the year like there are, there are particular moments that i think are very important like in israel i use the hebrew calendar a lot because it provides like an easy anchor right like purim is an easy anchor um shavuot which we missed this year is an easy anchor right um we're in the summer so it's all sad stuff so i won't go into it but like um there are moments in time every year that are like important to the gays or important to the bears or important to us and those are moments that i would want to say like we're doing a thing right um israel and germany we're gonna hang out and you know the same way that like uh i've watched my friends from from czechia and poland right have started doing the cross-pollination with the bear camps uh, more of that right or um just supporting and uplifting so many things there's so much important stuff that is already happening that we're just not all talking to each other about uh one of the things that i that i did last year as as mr bear israel in part of our secret community of of Mr. Bear and Mr. like leather and fetish was we're always we're all the time we don't know what's going on we're like who's where what's happening what's what so I I opened a google doc a google a google sheet and I said everybody put in your stuff <laughs> put in your event say where you're going right like and suddenly like and, and that still happens that's still going that's been going now for two years strong um we may have made they may have made a new one I don't really remember like a Facebook Messenger is not my top priority right now. <laughs> I'm sure you can guess. Um, but like, that's the sort of stuff that I mean. Like, there's, 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 there's a Rick and Morty episode that I think is very popular and very good. Pickle Rick. Um, about all the ways and all the things and all the insane depths that Rick will go to to avoid doing the very basic, boring, and unpleasant work of keeping his body alive and healthy, keeping his mind alive and healthy. He would rather turn into a pickle and almost die then go do the work of therapy right um and i bring that up because there's this am the amazing speech which is something i don't remember um but the therapist gives this amazing speech about you know pooping sucks no one likes to poop but you have to poop and then you have to wipe and then you have to use a bidet right you have to do all this in order right the things that we never talk about in movies or theater or film or i said that already or books right like there's a lot of boring unpleasant to do but necessary stuff that often doesn't happen because it's not glamorous, right? Mm -hmm. There's all this stuff that happened that needs to, in order to actually strengthen community, in order to actually strengthen interaction, like opening a Google Doc so everyone can share calendars, right? That's not, that's not earth shattering. That's not glamorous. It's not, I wouldn't put that on my resume, but it's important because it needs to happen because until it happened, no one had done it. And everyone had for years been like, well, what's happening next? I don't understand. How do I keep track of what's going on, right? Um, so I, on the one hand, I'd like to do like some big glamorous things. On the other hand, there's like a lot of, I think, tinkering, but how do we make like a clearinghouse? How do we make things more like transparent and communicative? And like, how do we actually, you know, here in Israel, we have a, we have a nightly Zoom. There's a nightly bear Zoom that's been going on for four years. Yeah. Four years. They meet every night at 9 p.m. It's impressive. It's awesome. I think they're so, you know, like, 9 p.m. As I told you guys in a in our conversation, by 9 p.m. I'm usually smoking the wacky wacky with friends, and then I'm passed out, right? Like, but I love that it's there, and I love that it exists, and I am so. Imp but like, all it needed was somebody to say, "I'm lifting up the gauntlet, and I'm 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 opening the space, and we're gonna show up if you want to. I'm here, right? And people show up, and they're there, and they do it, and it's not glamorous, but it's important. And like, for example, what if what if we had a monthly zoom for all bears across europe right mm -hmm. what if you know if i'm sitballing here 
And, and whoever wins Mr. Barrier Up, please do this. What if there was even a monthly check-in of all the Mr. Barrier Up? So it's like a monthly, like, let's chat, get to know each other. Because, like, we talk a big talk that we're brothers and friends. We don't actually all know each other. Because we can't. Unless you quit your job and make your life Mr. Bear and do nothing else, you cannot know everyone. Yeah, very true. That's tough. Right? And, like, maybe we could take a page from, from things that we see happening around us and make it bigger and larger. That's what I mean. There's just a lot of stuff that, like, is, is not glamorous. It's not exciting. It's not sexy. But it needs to happen, and it doesn't always happen. And I would like to make that also be part of my... Put that on my, my phone. Not Your sexy. <laughs> Our best groups we belong in here in Toronto. We don't have uh, groups anymore, but we had misters at that time. And it seems that when they see the amount of work that's required, then they, oh, I didn't yeah. think it was like that, so maybe I can continue. Because yeah. when Mr. Bear, he resigned. True. After a while, the, all the things he did for to elect, he quit. Like, oh, damn it, why didn't do this mm -hmm. now? But because they get so surprised the amount of things they had to do, things that not everything is mm -hmm. glamorous, that that becomes not very interesting for them because they want the the nice part, but not the what you have to do part. Yeah, that's humanity, right? Um, but it's also because, right? Because it's not glamorous, because it's not fun, because it's, we also like, like I know, I don't talk about how hard it is, you know. When I when I put on a play, when I mount a play, when I mount a production or anything, right? I don't spend a lot of time telling people about, oh my gosh, and you should you have no idea. Like last week, I didn't even know that I had a cast anymore. I go, yeah, we worked really hard, and this is what you you know. And I, I want them to experience the experience, not not all the awful, horrible things that happen to make it happen, right? Not all the difficult, like you know, like I didn't get a permit, so we can't do this, you know, or like I couldn't get insurance for this thing, so there's no high wire anymore, right? Like. Or, oh my gosh, we did, we got the permit yesterday. Can you imagine? Like, I don't, that, that, so people don't know that there's all that stuff because we pretend it doesn't happen. We just like, here's the gift, right? Um, I speak now as an artist, right? We talk about the gift of the art. We say like, here's the gift. I gave you this, you know, here's the party. Here's the event, right? Like, like you're very correct in your analysis, Christian. Like we're, 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 we're here in Israel. We're facing a very similar thing. Um, a very important member of the Israeli bear community, Ami Pomerantz. Um, uh, passed away uh, in November. Omi Pomerantz, who was a very important member of the Israeli bear community, passed away in November of last year. Uh, as I said, we, we don't do a whole hell of a lot in the winter. Um, we go, right, bears go to hibernation. Uh, but there's a lot of stuff that historically happens starting in spring into the summer uh, that historically Omi took care of. Omi did. Uh, and so now they're not happening. And people have been asking, well, why, 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 what happened to this? What happened to that? What happened to this? What happened to this? Right? And I, that's what happened. You know, the answer is that Ami did it, right? And, and because it's, you know, we don't talk about pooping and peeing, right? We don't talk about the sort of work that goes into raising an event. We just want to give the gift of the event. So now people are, like, not really sure how to recreate these things, right? Or they don't, they're suddenly learning how much work it takes to make it happen, and they're not really sure they want to do it. And that's valid. Right? That's really valid to discover that, you know, it takes 100 hours to put up a two-hour event and maybe you have better things to spend your 100 hours on. No shade, yeah. right? Um, but I think that maybe that's another thing as Mr. Bear, as Mr. Bear at all, actually, from this conversation that I'll take with me. is like being more transparent about how much work goes into, right? Being trans more transparent, perhaps inviting people who show an interest but are a little, like, daunted by how much work it is to be assistants or to tag along or to... to you know, because like that's another concern is like well, who comes next? What comes next? Right? Like I know how to put on events mostly because when I was in college I, I like you know, I went to North American college. So I had that undergrad experience of like being on this board and being on that board and like let's throw a fundraiser, you know, let's put on a play to save the town barn, right? Um and I also I make theater, right? I make fringe independent theater. Like I am a one man, you know. Let's make a happen machine. Um, and not everyone is. Ah, headphone. Uh, not everyone is. Not everyone knows. And, and, but maybe they want to and they're frightened because they don't know the question. You know, if you don't know what you don't know, you don't even know how to ask for help. Uh, and it just all looks daunting and horrifying. So now I thank you. 
the gift you guys gave me was was this clarity of like uh, something that I think I would like to keep going with for the rest of the year. Uh, to preempt your next question, which is what else do I want to do for the rest of the year? Uh, I guess I, I'd like to help my uh, my community grow stronger with that also. Share a little bit more of like what happens when the, like how how is the sausage made? So my famous question is a tradition. What would you tell to yourself if you meet your old self before we start clowning, for example, or Mr. Bear <laughs> Israel? What would you suggest yourself? Well, I will have to be honest. I never crowned. I was a cesarean section. So, <laughs> and I, I didn't get a crown. I got a sash. So I don't know what I would tell myself before crowning. It never happened. But, um, <laughs> Sorry, a terrible joke. Oh, uh, what a bad dad joke. Um, I think I would say to myself, yes, you do things based off of intuitive intuition and what feels right. Try to have a plan for what happens next if you do win. Because, like I said, I really didn't think I would win. So I didn't really have a plan. I was just sort of like, hey, guys, awesome. These are things I care about, and this is what I think I might do. Um, and that was really hard to get started, right? Like, uh, and then this whole, you know, it took me nine months to start getting people uh, to sh start organizing and, and taking people out to the theater. We went to the theater several times to see gay plays or interesting plays for gays. Um, and then right before I was able to announce the next event, right, uh, things changed drastically and we haven't really picked it up again because things changed, my life changed, my ability to do things changed. Um, so yeah, I think that's what I would say. Like be, take that, that gut intuition, accept it, translate it into something more practical and go for the next thing. What are your plans for the rest of the year? <laughs> Actually, there was, a, <laughs> he we, got you. Yeah, so, <laughs> I know I did, I did steal the answer already, but I, I, I can also give a more broad answer and not just like this one cool discovery. I did, I did think about it in advance, right? Um, so I would say my personal goals, uh, may I do that? Personal goals and Mr. Fair goals? Sure, sure. So my personal goals are, I have, um, my thesis production actually is going to do its first, uh, hopefully financially remunerative production, hopefully like finally make some money, um, three days before Mr. Bear Europe contest <laughs> in Jerusalem. So I want to survive that. And then I would like to get that play up and running in like a more steady way. Um, and like I said, that play about Gombots, uh, that clown show about Gombots wanting a dicking is, is, is on my list of things to be working on. Uh, as Mr. Bear, uh, I'm looking forward to helping create like a really awesome Mr. Bear contest 2024. Um, and also, like I said, uh, just a few minutes ago, uh, helping teach and share and 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 train people in in the hard work and and how to make it not as hard um, of making things happen. Uh, and also, uh, I have uh, a few a few ideas for for parties or cultural events that I'd like to get going. One of which I'll tell you right now uh, is going to be called Tobut uh, Dubit in Hebrew, which means bear culture. Uh, and I I am envisioning a sort of open mic night, uh, open performance night of bear and bear adjacent performers uh, once every couple of months that I like to start running. So uh, those are sort of my goals for the, for the rest of the year. So and imagine if you win then. <laughs> oh my gosh, you I win, right? Then I got to like, I don't know. I don't know. It's hard, right? <laughs> I'm so split. <laughs> uh, I, I, if I win, I'll have to give something up. That's, the, that's clearly the takeaway, right? If I win, I'll have to give something up or get an assistant. Yeah. <laughs> True. And you crown that sweet, sweet prize money for an assistant. <laughs> so please invite people to vote for you to become the next Mr. Bear Year of 2024. Go, go get it. Thank you guys so much for listening to me just yammer on uh, for however long this podcast ends up being. And please consider voting for me, Abraham, the bear clown, to be your next Mr. Bear Year of 2024. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. It's been an honor and a privilege. Oh, and follow me on Instagram at Mr. Bear Israel. 
Uh, if you like the clowns, follow us at Clowns Against. Uh, and if you want to know more about me as a theater artist, you can follow at Olive Bed Gimmel, which is me. Thanks, Abraham, for talking with us. It was really great talking with you. Yes, yeah, so you can vote for him or for Mr. Bear Europe. This is him. He's going to be in Germany, Cologne. And you can vote for through MrBearEurope.com. And he's always Mr. Bear. Israel. Israel. Thanks so much for the talk. Thanks again to Marcy, Mr. Bear Poland, who helped us connect with him. him. Thanks a lot. I appreciate you. BrazilAccess.com. You can go to BrazilAccess uh, YouTube. Our Fluffy's channel page. Yes. And us. <laughs> and the BrazilAccess show. And BrazilAccess Instagram. Yes. And these two. So thanks so much and stay fluffy.